Hello, this is Tabitha again with another Wednesday art snack for you. Um, this month over in paintthroughit.com, we are talking about your creative practice. So developing a creative practice or enriching, pumping up that creative practice, whatever you can do to get uh, moving on that creative practice. So what is a creative practice? Um, to me, a creative practice is uh, one, regularly creating art. And I don't mean regularly, regularly <laughs> like once every you know, three months. This is either a daily practice, uh, preferably a daily practice. Um, but we chunk it down into weeks and paint through it. And we make our week weekly art goals. Um, so it's uh, regularly creating art and the habits or rituals that initiate or add to the art making experience. And these habits um, can be habits of thought. It's not just the physical habits that you have. It's what are you thinking? What's messing with your brain or, or helping you to create art? It can be anything. So one of the things that I suggest you do when creating art is to document what you're doing. Document your process. Creative practice, creative process. Two uh, different but connected things. So this is especially important when you are doing something that is um, you're painting over multiple sessions um like that one right there i've painted on i don't know how many times um and that one back there and this one over here you know these are oil paintings and they take a while so what i do when i um paint on those is i take um I actually use my art journals for this, but you can have a separate book. And if you do that, you might want to just get a little, a little sort of spiral book and make notes in there about what you do. What are you thinking? So put the date at the top um, of the page and write down what colors you're using. If you're mixing colors, what is the color mix you did? Um, what brushes are you using? What are your thoughts? What do you want to do with this painting? And you can do this while you're painting, but especially do it at the end of your painting session so that next time you pick up that painting, you can open your book and look at it and say, oh yeah, that's what shade of blue I use. That's what I was thinking. Um, so we do this in my classes when we have a multiple multiple session class, you know, a few minutes before ending. I say, all right, everyone stop painting, take out a piece of paper and just write down where you're at. So you write down your list of colors, your blends of colors, um, the things you wanna work on the next time you work on that painting and your general thoughts and ideas about it. And it will be really helpful to you to do this. And you can even, uh, let's see if I can find it here. This is one of my art journals that I also use as a studio log. And in this, I even take uh, photographs of my work and it's a piece of paper and Put them in here with my notes. I just tape them down and it really just helps me to figure out what I'm doing. And I might put down a painting and not pick it up for another month and have no idea where I was at. So that is the analog way of doing it. That is the pen and pencil way and I know you know as a visual artist you might be tactile and like to write like me but I also I'm a digital person. So another way of doing this is to find a program that works for you. Um, there are two that I would recommend. 
And there are free versions for each of these. And one is called Airtable. And I showed you that I think last week on my Wednesday art snack. So you can find that online. Um, but yeah, airtable.com, I'll put a link. And the other one is Trello. And both of those are really good. You can add photographs, links to inspiration, pictures, reference pictures, whatever you're thinking, type in your thoughts. It's very a very organized way to do it. Third way to do this, and I like to do this when I have a lot of thoughts and ideas about a painting, but I just have to put it down for the moment, is I take out my phone and I record a video of my painting. So I will put my phone up to my painting and I'll go around sections of it and say, oh, and I'll point to the painting and I'll say, in this section, I really wanna do some shading right under the jaw. And over here, I think I wanna add some yellow and whatever I wanna do, I just take a tour and it's especially good for a big canvas. I just take a tour of the painting saying what I wanna do and the video's on my phone and the next time I want to paint on it, I just go to the video. And um, if you don't think it's gonna be for a while, if you're not gonna be able to pick up that painting for a while, you can always make little notes and tuck them. If you're working on a stretched canvas, you can tuck a note in the back of the canvas. And if you're not, if, sorry, I'm not looking at the camera. If you're not um, using an actual book to write these things in, write it on a piece of paper. As a matter of fact, this is what I did for one of my classes. There's the notes on the colors we used and there's some thoughts on what I wanted to do. Uh, and this was the painting we were working on. Um, so I just wrote a simple fabric, repaint white on folds, blend dark gray into wet white. Sometimes all you need is just enough to jog your memory of what you were doing. Fold it, stick it in the back of the canvas, you're good to go. That's the easy peasy way. I do recommend an actual book though. Okay, that's it. Have fun. Join us at www.paintthroughit.com. And we are doing um, an art accountability challenge. And it's going to be happening all year long. So Mondays, you check in with your goals. Fridays, you check in with your progress. Check in four times in one month. And you get an invitation to a free online painting events hosted by yours truly. So the link is down below and uh, happy painting. I'll see you soon.